I'm at a gypsy. Gypsy gang, and today, before we get into this episode, just going to give you an announcement of a new sponsor uh, that I actually chased down uh, to get them on the podcast, and that was because I really wanted to start using their products again. Now, if you've been following the podcast recently, you would know that we're on a massive health kick uh, as we get ready to take on World Vets at Glen Helen in November of 2023. Athletic Greens is not only an all-in-one formula that helps me just cover all my nutritional bases, uh, it's also the first healthy habit that I have uh, that starts every single day. It sets the tone for a healthy day and just keeps my eyes laser focused on Glen Helen at the end of the year. Definitely notice improvements to my skin and massive improvements to my overall gut health. AG1 is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients of the highest quality that are able to offer gut health support, mood support, can affect your energy each day and contribute to overall healthier looking hair and skin. Go to athleticgreens.com slash gypsytales uh, if you want to get that free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs added to your first order. Thanks so much to the guys and girls at Athletic Greens. We're excited to have you on board. So. Yum. It's actually pretty good. Oh, it's way better than what I thought. <laughs> oh, All right, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get rolling. So, Joe Shimoda, welcome to Gypsy Tales, mate. You're, uh, you've got a bit of a busted wing unfortunately so i was like you know what let's get joey on the show he's he's probably got a little bit of a little bit of downtime so um thanks for coming on mate no thank you thank you for having me so um few any any details on on the crash obviously you're having a pretty good off off season getting ready for east coast probably going to be challenging for a title this year in uh in the east but a bit of bit of bad luck yeah just uh it was um uh, Thursday morning um yeah we were supposed to ride on at Glen Helen track but it was too windy out there so we uh made a final decision to go uh to the corona test track but we didn't really like water or prep or anything so it was really marbly dry um track and then yeah um I crashed on the section right before the whoop section um which like I try to keep the momentum uh, going fifth, um, jumping the last two last double, and then unfortunately I, I didn't really have enough engine brake to keep the rev high, yeah. so the bike shut off when I landed from the uh, three to double, and then yeah I just as soon as I get on the gas it just went boom, and, uh. and then yeah just I it's motor racing you know you can't really do much. Yeah, what um, so, this, this year's this year's been so bad for for injuries. What do you think that there's anything like different, or there's any reason for why we're seeing so many guys hurt? Like, is it is it just the pace mm -hmm. is is so high, or you know, like have you kind of thought about what why that might be? Uh, for sure. I, I well, I can like think of lot lot of reasons. Um. But it just like um, ev everyone's different. Like some rider like can deal with it easy, but some like likes like to have on the different ways. Uh, but at, I mean, like at the end of the day, it's just like I don't know. Um, in my case, it was fifty-fifty. You know, like yeah, it's kind of a part of my fault. Maybe I put a clutch in to avoid it. But at the same time, like the track and the the conditions, um, did just enough to do that. So like, yeah, there's a lot of reason behind it. It's um, it is been crazy to see how, just how bad. And I mean, your team in particular has just had so much bad luck yeah. with injuries, and it's like you know, there's there's, I think the Husky team doesn't even have anyone to go east now. It's like. It's been a brutal year for Supercross. No, for sure, for sure. <clears throat> yeah, we just, you know, we're just trying to do our best by uh, um, 
not just myself it it was kind of hard to see like, because like the crash on set that kind of happened right in front of me um, oh really and then i had yeah I, and i had like a 10 minute uh model left after after he crashed and then yeah while i'm riding um it's weird because <clears throat> when you see a crash really c close in person and you try to ride after that um it's, it's a little bit uh not scary but makes you like defensive yeah so it's like it was it's just like i don't know i hate to see riders yeah. going down for sure it's just a it's just a gnarly game you guys play i mean there's there's not i talk about it all the time on here but there's just not too many other sports where the athletes are just facing so much risk every single day and you guys are so good at your job and you're so good at what you do that you make it look easy and you make it look safe and we sometimes forget the the dangers but i think this year we've really <laughs> seen like oh this is a there's a sport with big consequences and every day that these guys ride is a is a big risk no for sure yeah i mean every one one maybe two rider per week crashing yeah at this like time of the year yeah i just hmm. maybe i don't you know uh i don't need to ride that much just on the yeah. practice like will you crash on the race yeah like try harder um so much like reason behind it but on the practice day it's like kind of rare to see like uh people going down this much in the past i feel like so yeah maybe you know uh, maybe like it's important to try 100 percent. Maybe try to find more limits at the track, but at the same time, yeah, like, mm, what's what? What are we like training for? Are we training for the race. So like, if we yeah. can't get to the race, it's kind of yeah, such a such a weird feeling. Yeah, and uh, it's funny, man, that you say that because I think that was one of the cool things about the World Supercross Series that I didn't really predict before the series started is that the guys fly in on a monday and you fly into the, the uk or you fly to australia and there's no test track there's no practice bikes there's no like you can't actually practice before the race so you get there and then it's like media and you're working in the gym and you try and keep up your fitness but everybody's getting to the race because nobody can practice for the week before and <laughs> I think that one of the reasons why people practice so much in America is because the test track is right there and the teams are right there and and you get like a even me I've got a I'm going to do world vets at Glen Helen at the end of the year and my brother's training every day and he's riding and he's he has like a different job and I have like anxiety because he's training more than me and so I imagine for you, if you were like, oh, I'm not going to ride, I'm just going to get to the race safely, and then you see all of your teammates and your competition at the test track every day, you would feel like a anxiety every day for not training. So I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the interesting parts of our sport, I think, is that you guys have the ability to do your sport. Like MotoGP, they can't do that. In Formula One, they, they can't do that. Yeah. It makes It's very unique to Supercross. No, for sure. It's, it's, uh, yeah, a lot of the riding volume is a lot than all the other motorsports for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, like, I, just had a, I, I just had a thought then, like, I wonder if in Supercross, imagine if they made a rule where like you could only ride Supercross one day for the week and it was like a testing day and all of your other riding had to be outdoors. I wonder if that'd maybe make it a little bit safer. I don't I don't know I uh, because it's mm, I don't I think that will be to me that will be more riskier once yeah, everybody's at the race mm. because like because like road racing always same condition yep. it could rain and stuff but still like the track no bumps it's yep. only like speed but we have like these obstacles um 
you kind of want to um, not keep working, but kind of want to like. Um, yeah, like progression. You want to keep progressing. It, yeah, like you don't want to get away from it and then jump on back to supercross. It feels really awkward. Yeah, yeah, that that you know makes sense. Saying? So, so being so being uh, on the sidelines a little bit, you've had a chance to be a fan of the sport and be around. You know, we've had A one and then San Diego and A two. So, as a fan of Supercross, what do you think of the racing so far? Well, I think it's honestly, honestly, like Supercross is like way different than all the other sports to me. Well, I think just the event is amazing. Um, like, you, I don't know. I just enjoyed it simply just more from watching because, I don't know, I haven't watched Supercross since like three years, maybe. Yeah. In yeah. person. So, um, yeah, just watching the event just made me realize again oh, how, how, like, how cool this sport is. Um, and then, yeah, like 10... Hmm, Maybe 10, 11 years ago, I came United States with my my parents. Uh, maybe even more, but well, I anyway I watched the Anaheim. <laughs> it's crazy to see how much the sport grow. Yeah. Uh, from now to back then, um, no, it's like I can't really believe myself um, lining up to the gate every week. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it's. Uh... It's one of the, I think this year for me, I said it on, I can't remember what podcast, but it's funny watching Dirt Sharks videos from this year has just made Supercross look so cool. The The event, like you said itself, and it seems like the crowds have been amazing and the, the riding, like, I mean, the, the 450 class is just psycho. You know the how good Eli's riding and Kenny and Chase and Coop like it has been such a wild wild season and it's uh it's cool that you can see how much it's grown in like maybe eleven or twelve years since you first came to Supercross. No, for sure. Yes, so much different in two fifty class and four fifty class too. Um, yeah, like four fifty class. There's kind of no room for mistake um no. i feel like you you tip over in a turn could go from like third to tenth maybe more yeah uh, where 250 like you can kind of come back if you're a really good rider have a fitness and stuff but yeah 450 guys um yeah literally the guys up in front making no mistakes yeah it's crazy that they're doing it because track is changing every every minute you know and it's so crazy that they can do that for 20 something lap in a row <laughs> yeah yeah no it's it's been pretty special so so that's probably probably a cool thing to talk about then is when you very first come to america was when your parents brought you to anaheim was that like your first time you ever saw supercross or like when was the first time you saw <clears throat> supercross as a young japanese kid and when did you like set the goal of like I want to be a supercross racer? So, you know, everyone everyone's um, like start riding because of the passion, because um, the parents, um, I don't know, some reason to start it. My my case was little like little different different I would say. I uh, so my dad, well my so my dad liked riding motocross. And he obviously stopped, uh, couldn't do it, keep going anymore due to like the, the budget, I would say. But, um, and then, yeah, one, so one day it was a, it was a Christmas day. Um, I come down the stairs, there's, there's a, a bike sitting ready for me to ride. And, and yeah, my dad took me to like a small truck and I, I was riding and riding Probably I rode from four years old to seven years old, just for fun. No training, nothing is. I never raced it before, and um, they didn't know what this sport was. And uh, yeah, one day my so my dad put signed me up for the race. Um, 
and I got seventh. Okay, <laughs> not really good, but yeah, hey, in, in 10, that baby. moment, like it's in the points. Yeah, like in that moment, he's like, oh, I mean, the racing kind of fun, and then he he um, signed up for all these all different races. That's in Japan. I started to race and ride more, and was kind. I was kind of getting better at it. I got couple like amateur championship there um and then yeah things the thing was going well and yeah one day i came back from school this was when i was hmm, nine years old maybe yeah yeah so i came back from school and and my dad my dad and mom said yeah come sit on the chair real quick and i sat on it and kind of serious talking and they said you're like what did i do wrong yeah and they said we're going to america next week bought ticket and everything for 10 days you'll be racing there and i'm like all right let's go like didn't really bother me that that much because it was only for 10 days i'm like yeah it's like cool place to travel maybe and so we came here 65 that this was on 65 and and yeah we i did the uh, race called uh, you know the gold cup yeah yeah this yeah. amateur race yeah yeah so I did that and and yeah obviously not 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 that good um, I probably finished like four or five okay then I met Styles Robertson um, Pierce oh, Brown yeah. yeah like the, the 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 guys that I'm racing against right now since since ever um they were literally going seven to nine second a lap faster than me every lap. Wow! And my dad is like freaking out, you know, like what do you, what happened, you know? Because I was doing so well in Japan, and then there was like like this much difference within like you know a minute and twenty second track. So, and then and then after that, um, what happened was like. I think it kind of lit my my dad a little bit. We got to, like, he's like, kind of like, we got to get there. Yeah. Maybe no point racing Japan at this point. Maybe we should go, you know, race, race in America. And, and I was, I was like, at that time, like, I didn't really think ahead. I was like, okay, we can, we can do that. Like, I was like, I thought it was a cool thing to do. But, yeah, like, wasn't, like, really interested on, like, dirt bike. Um, like a career kind of thing. Dirt bike world for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't thinking, like, it's going to be, like, this serious. I was thinking, like, okay, maybe, you know, practice and uh, race there, come back, and then, you know, um, just live normal life or something. But started doing well little by little and and at one point after Loretta's I was able to um sign with Geico Honda and and at that moment yeah I set my goal okay maybe I have a good good opportunity now um maybe I can um be one of the big star in in Supercross trying hard enough and then and then yeah at that moment I set my goal and then took everything everything a little more serious and and here I'm at right now dude yeah it's it's a it's such a cool story and to I think one of the I think one of the things about uh your position is that there's no real role models for you to look up to there's no one that's kind of no, so, done what you've done so yeah like Mm -hmm. like uh, people you know people ask me what's the reason you started riding supercross and then who's your like um favorite rider i literally didn't have any favorite rider till like hmm, maybe last year after supercross um yeah. i i kind of like i like barsha right now because he's just like um from outside watching i think he's really entertaining yeah so but yeah like i didn't really have any um wasn't fun of the sto sport at first didn't know what supercross or motocross or anything 
and young. Yeah, I think. Um, oh, do you, do you know Basha now? Like, have you met him and you've like you talk and hang out? No, I no, I know them now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sick. Yeah, he's such yeah, a. I know. He's yeah, such he's a cool he's guy. really cool. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I think that that that's quite a important. It's quite important for a young kid is to see a pathway into the future and to look at people mm-hmm. that have already achieved what what you want to achieve. And I think that if you look at Jet, he's had Chad Reed, and if you look at all the American riders, they've had, um, you know, like everybody that every champion you know the year before them so there's a very clear pathway in their mind of oh, i can be like this guy i can be like this guy but for you i mean you know like uh, akita narita was a a good japanese rider but you know never a guy that was a a big name in motocross or or supercross and i think that for as far as the the japanese go like most of the bikes that we race are japanese motorcycles but there's no Mm -hmm. you know japanese riders on the those motorcycles so i think that for you to make it even this far forget about the future because i think that you're going to do so much more in the future but to make it this far right now to be a factory kawasaki rider to be winning races to be fighting for championships like you've made history for japan already and you're so you're so young yeah i mean it's really cool um i think yeah it, it'll be cool like if uh more of more japanese or rider come here and race but yeah i um i try to not really um like care about this history thing um because I feel like, you know, like, you you obviously feel good winning for the first time from Japan and stuff. But it's like, as I feel like as the athlete, when you yeah. think you made something or when you think you're at the top for a second, it's only going to go down. So, um, yeah, I think my my I think my strongest part when I ride is uh, I'm I'm being a little bit more careless than other person i I would say not not really get like emotional um yeah yeah always you know always just like hmm, like i get i'll get past you know try not go crazy um you know we have another race to improve yeah so like yeah yeah no no it's it's you're right like as an athlete you need to stay in the moment and not think like, oh, I'm the yeah, best like Japanese stay. rider. Like, it, you know, it's important no, to not, stay yeah. in that headspace. But, you know, I think I think that there's definitely room though at times to, you know, just reflect on, on where you're at and be like, well, like I've done something very special to get to this point and there's still work to be done and I'm still going to, you know, be a much better racer. But yeah, I think it's still cool to be able to look and, be like you've you've achieved something very special and you think about now there there is kids in japan that are racing you know maybe they'll walk down the stairs and they'll have a motorbike in in their living room and but they'll have joe shimoda to look up to and they'll say to their parents this is what joe did he went to america when he was nine he won all the races in japan and you know so like you're being the guy that uh that these you know these kids in japan are able to look up to yeah no that's i th- I think that's really cool too um i'm trying to be um a kind of the person not not just fast yeah but like makes you want to f- feel like you want to be that guy yeah you know like you know, you know what i'm saying like yeah because there is a lot of fast riders um and retire and gets name for getting yeah and i feel like i don't want to be like that so working on working yeah, on my best will, hey well like i remember um when we first started talking on instagram i said you're my girlfriend's favorite writer and it's crazy to me the effect so she hates bikes like she loves bikes in the fact oh, that really? it's my <laughs> she loves bikes and the fact that it's my job and uh it makes us money and it lets us live our life and pay our rent and 
So she never talks shit on bikes for that. But I'm like trying to get her to watch a race. Like, oh, come and watch this. Come watch that. And then she was always just like, nah, not interested, not interested, not interested. And uh, and there was a race. It was last. It was last Supercross season. And it was one of the times you maybe you won, like won a heat race or something like that. And you're on the podium and she's walking past and she's like, wait, who's that? And I'm like, oh, that's Joe Shimoda. And she's like, is she, is, is he Japanese rider? And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, wow, that's like, that's amazing. Like she's never, she just thought, she's like, Supergrass is all just white dudes basically. And she's like, oh, this is, this is super cool. And Japan's her favorite country. She watches anime. She's been to Japan a bunch of times. She'll eat sushi three times a week. Like she loves the oh whole God. culture of, ja- of Japan. And, uh, and it showed the like your instant i guess star power that you can have by being on the podium and uh and yeah like i, I think it's uh yeah i think i think that by doing what you're doing you know you're saying you don't just want to be a racer um you know i think like you're kind of doing some really cool things to maybe like get new fresher eyeballs on the sport like you're eye-catching and you make people interested uh in a way that i just don't i don't think other other riders can maybe mm. no i get it no i think it's it's i think it's yeah pretty cool to just you know <laughs> not just being on the podium and be the fast guy um yeah. also um yeah I, also want to be a writer that people love love you yeah you know yeah yeah i think yeah i think you i think you're doing it it's uh i think too one of the cool things that we've seen in the last couple years is maybe it's maybe it's kind of got something to do a little bit with like you coming up with jet maybe because (laughs) realistically you and jet are very similar age he's from australia you're from japan so you're both I guess like foreigners to to Supercross, um, and you've seen you know the way that Jet's so like free with his personality and and what that kind of brings. But I mean, I think back to like the Team Fried videos from the last couple of years, and you know you've got like Go USA at Red Bud, and and like there's a real vibe that it seems like you and Jet and Hunter like can really feed feed off each other. And it's really created like a, a a super cool vibe. So, yeah, maybe it's like a some really good timing for you to come in and and make your mark as well. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, the red button thing was pretty funny. <laughs> that was actually uh, my sister uh, wrote wrote it on my stomach, and and yeah, <laughs> turned it out pretty good. <laughs> you probably but also also they're like when you yeah when you do this stuff i feel like because i'm i'm from japan foreign country like kind of want to be respectful you know like not just stupid i like usa blah 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 yeah um so like that was a little little bit aggressive for me but i guess people liked it so it's cool yeah well and hey maybe maybe it's not uh yeah, maybe that's not like as aggressive as you think. Like I, th- I think that was right in the in the sweet spot of of you paying like your respect to you know the U.S. and because man, it's it's a really cool vibe, especially Red Bud. Like that weekend, Fourth of oh, July, yeah. the crowd's going crazy and like it's so hard not to want to be a part of you know that that vibe going on i honestly i think you nailed it i think that yeah maybe don't think that that's maybe too far because i think that was like right in the sweet spot no thank you good to hear from you (laughs) (laughs) so what what is i mean so i've got um i'm real good friends with taka you know taka from Mm -hmm. yeah yeah, so really good friend of mine so i've known him for uh like a very very long time now uh so i've always had a few, um, like, I guess, Japanese, like a connection with Japanese riders because um, they spent quite a lot of time in, in, in Australia. But for people that don't know what 
motocross is like in Japan. Can you give us a rundown of what uh, the sports like there, what the racing's like there, what's it like as a a part of Japanese culture? Like, I guess give give us all a, a rundown on what what motocross is like there. What motocross like there in Japan? Um, obviously, like the racing is same. Like, um, I mean, not too like a, the amount of people is for sure less there over there. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like I, I think it's cool racing there. But I feel like the the main difference is they're they're I feel like they're missing on the, the exp- excitement parts of uh, motocross. I feel like mm, just race, um, go home. Yeah, nothing yeah. like mm, like uh. Oh, this like it doesn't like when I look at like a like a ticket of motocross Japan National or like a like a website or or something. It I feel like it doesn't make me want to go there. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit like what is this band? Yeah, you know, not not too attractive. So I mean, so that's why like I. <clears throat> If I have a time off, like for example, last year right after um, Pala mm. National, um, I took a flight next day, went there, raced that weekend um, to bring more people in and then and then let them know how how like cool this event is. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm trying to do uh, give sports something back. Yeah, but it's it's kind of hard for me to do just by me, you know. So yeah, yeah I I don't even, all I can do is just go out there, you know, um, ex not explain but like show people okay this sport is sick and and yeah bring more people in and that's all I can do. So yeah, um, yeah. Well, I think yeah. um, it, I mean it was cool. Like I watched when when you went back and you rode, especially <laughs> I think because you're on the four fifty. I think that that made a lot of people interested like to I guess get a bit of a peek into the future to see what it's like of for you on a big bike um but yeah I mean you definitely did bring bring attention to the the Japanese nationals and I think um yeah I think we we all should probably be a little bit more interested in the Japanese series because that's where all the factory bikes are that's where the new models are going to be like japan kind of is a a cool place for the sport that we probably should put a little bit more attention on and but maybe just the fact that we haven't had one of the big stars come from japan maybe that's why we haven't you know the the attention doesn't kind of go there but i mean yeah i definitely Mm. found myself being extremely interested in that that race and also, we've got Jay Wilson, one of the Australian riders. He won the the two fifty yep. class championship there this year. So I think a lot of Aussies were more watching the the Japanese series. But yeah, I think that by you going back there, and it's cool that you have that passion to do that because it'd be very easy for you to take a weekend off and not get on a plane and not fly back to Japan. And you know, you've just done a big hard season of racing, so. I think it is quite cool that you actually make that effort to go back and do that. No, yeah, I, yeah, I enjoy racing there. Um, yeah, it was. I kind of, I mean, I appreciate like the team, even the team Kawasaki, uh, let me race there with four fifty. Um, yeah, surprising to me, but yeah, it was just all everything went good there. So happy how it ended. Dude, and the track was sick, huh? Track, honestly, the track was really rough. Um, yeah. It rained the day before the race, like it was started from mushy kind of soft dirt, turned into like, like the, the whole track was like really rutted. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, man, it, it looked sick, and there was some, 
there was like a bunch of videos floating around of you doing some really cool shit like just going jumping super deep into uh <laughs> like into like rough straightaways and stuff like you made you made japan look pretty dope for that weekend no i, I enjoyed it i did enjoyed it a lot <laughs> so I, I was uh i was talking to taka actually after the race and he said that you were on pretty much just a like a fairly stock 450 sr kawasaki was that that's right yeah um it, it's it's called i think 450 sr edition yep yep yeah what what yeah just a pipe on it and that's it and it was it was pretty good like you made the thing look like it was a factory bike well it's it's like from going to 250 to to 450 like like the power the power is enough yeah i mean i'm not used to it used to the 450 either but yeah i hopped on it, it they're like do you need more power i'm like no i'm fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm good i'll chill maybe yeah. maybe tune it down a little <laughs> yeah 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 no yeah you made you made that Bikes, bike yeah good yeah, you made that thing look good. And yeah, I think Taka was pumped because I think, uh, I know he puts a lot of effort into testing that particular bike. Mm. And he's like a very, he's like a, I guess just the ultimate Japanese, you know, mechanical Wait, minded person. Talking... Oh, sorry. Wait, are you talking about Taka Higashino? Oh, no, 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 not Taka oh. Higashino. No, uh, Taka uh, Katsuya. Oh, okay. That makes sense now because that, oh, he's, he's like, he, he he said, he's, he's been testing. I'm like, how does <laughs> nah, the star nah, rider nah. testing the bike? No, 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 no. Takashi. Ta okay, okay. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, he's the, he's the man. But yeah, he was like, he was real, he was like real proud. He was like, oh, you know, we set up the, the special racer. And because I think that they were maybe worried that yeah you'd want more power and you'd want like way more from the bike than than what they had but yeah he was stoked that you seem to be like really happy with just like the fairly stock bike no i, I was yeah i was fine with it just yeah no no worries <laughs> don't, <laughs> That's so don't think too much <laughs> so um you you've been I, I actually didn't know maybe not many people maybe not enough people know but you've actually got a pretty sick YouTube channel that that you're doing, and you oh really? Speak, yeah, dude. I I hadn't I had no idea how good the content was that you were putting out on that that YouTube channel, and <laughs> you're speaking in Japanese for most of those videos. That is dope, and you have to keep doing that. Really? Um, yeah, I was planning to I was planning to do it, but I mean the color. <laughs> uh broken so but but yeah uh, i uh what, what what do you think of like me speaking english is it is it funny or like pretty natural no no i think you're, like, you the, yeah the accent and stuff no nah, dude you you should not be in any way self-conscious about like the english or also i actually don't think that you should avoid speaking japanese either because so oh really so I think, um, so this is me speaking as like the content guy that wants to like grow the sport. Like I would like to have the sport more mainstream and make, and that's what I try and do with this podcast. Like that's why the YouTube thumbnails and the clickbaity titles and it, I want to be able to catch the attention of people that don't really know or like aren't hardcore Supercross fans. Like they might see our thumbnail on youtube and be like oh what's that about you know they don't have to know motocross to want to watch our content and i think mm. that you know like i've seen i've got a bunch of messages like a lot of messages from people that were like oh man i didn't really know what supercross was but i started watching the podcast and like now i'm into it i'm gonna buy a bike and that's how i think we're gonna grow the sport and i think that's how you can use content and media to grow the sport um and that's why i think with with you it's like you can reach such a crazy audience man like and especially in in japan like i really think that by you speaking japanese and by you 
like almost like making your content for the Japanese market in a way, I think that's a way that you're going to be able to bring like a lot of attention and a lot of eyeballs to the sport because, bro, let's face it, you're a good looking young Japanese kid that is like amazingly talented on the dirt bike. And I think about, I, I was thinking about this too before we started uh, or like when we when we said we wanted to do this, like, dude, if if there's no Jet Lawrence, like you're probably him in terms of the attention and the like, people looking towards like this is the next big star. Like, let's say let's just like erase Jet from the from the sport. Like, then you're mm-hmm. the national champion for motocross, and then so all of a sudden we've got this Japanese kid that has, like I said, good looking young dude that's come over and just won this massive series, right? So, you know, I think that we pro like we probably don't give you enough credit in a sense, but that's because Jet is doing is doing his thing. So it's like but it's not like there's only room for Jet and not room for you. So I think that you still just keep continuing to to grow your brand and yeah, I was watching the vlogs last mm. night and I put the subtitles on <clears throat> so I could, like, you were speaking Japanese, but I could read everything that you were saying. And then and then I think, too, like, you know, you're, you're like, um, I'm guessing you're probably a little bit nervous doing, like, long podcasts in English because you're worried about, you know, sounding a certain way or, like, the accent. But in Japanese, that's your ultimate personality. Like, that's you can express everything that you want to express you've got the full you've got the full language at, at your disposal you're not having to translate what you want to say in your head so e- for me as a person that doesn't speak japanese i can watch mm. your videos with the subtitles on and i get to really see your full personality so like i don't think that you should worry at all about when you speak in english and like i don't think you should worry about your accent i think just lean into it and enjoy you know like enjoy the fact that you do speak two languages and then when you've got the opportunity to to uh you know speak japanese on your own platform and your own videos bro i think honestly you should lean into that so hard because we're so used to yeah dude for sure man like i'm telling you and we're so used to watching things with subtitles these days. It's not it's not uncommon. It's not awkward. Like, we put subtitles on our English videos. <laughs> and so, you know, people are people yeah. are, are used to it. So yeah, I I'm telling you, mate, I, I think that I think that you're uh it's like limitless what, what you're able to do. And then I think that if you really just go with full confidence like i'm sure you've got so many ideas in your head and i'm sure you've got so many things that you would want to do don't let any anything stop you don't have any doubts about um you know like whether it's english or just zero doubts bro like you're honestly killing it and i think that any ideas that that you have just go full head on into it because like we all want to see it no, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I was. I just always thought hmm, because I, when I do uh, YouTube videos, I, either I speak in Japanese or less English, so uh, not making too much troubles. And I don't know. It's sometimes I yeah I do I do feel like when I talk to someone, I feel like even myself I'm trolling them or like they're not taking me serious enough so i was like yeah just forget about the english part um and then use the japanese or whatever but yeah um you know my (laughs) english is getting better too so yeah maybe i start using a little more yeah yeah no i think um because it it would be so my my partner she's not she's not uh english isn't her first language and so i think that Mm. i see uh I think I I can see the maybe some of like the insecurities that that you'd have as like someone that's speaking a second language uh, or English English is your second language, so yeah I think it would be quite quite hard and um, 
there would be like sometimes some doubt and confidence issues that you would have as a result of it, I imagine. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I need, I need to do better. <laughs> no, but that's that's but what I'm saying. I, it'll be I fine. Don't think, yeah. I, yeah, I don't think you do need to do better. I think like everyone understands, everyone is grateful to, you know, like have you in the sport. And it's funny, like, okay, so you talk about Taka Higashino. He's like the ultimate for just not giving a fuck like he does not give a fuck at all like he says the funny and no, like that's wanky's, true. <laughs> wanky's the same you know like they do, they don't have like amazing english and they don't give a fuck like they just run it and they're so funny and they like fully like lean into it so yeah i think uh uh I, yeah english is gonna get better over time but at the end of the day, like, who gives a fuck? Like, you're you. You're doing the best that you can. And, like, we're, we all just appreciate it. No, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Taka in one case, super funny. That was one of the uh, D- DBK's news channel thing. <laughs> Have you seen that before? Yeah, dude. It was I was dying laughing on that. So. yeah that that's super funny but they just run it man like they're they're not worried but i think you know maybe do you think that in supercross you just it's like very professional very like you know do, is that the thing where it's like oh they're freestyle i'm super cross yeah. it's like different so yes yeah, so, so like freestyle like um more of you know like not not bad guys but like you see like twit twitch don't really care like showing smoking or something you know yeah f- free about themselves which which i think is really cool um it looks fun it looks exciting but yeah like I, as like uh because because i'm the, the racer is a little bit i feel like a little different more a little more um former like more more professionals so yeah i just don't really want to like um have any troubles Mm. so yeah i I just have to i just have to be careful you know yeah yeah but i don't maybe that's it's not like it's not like you're out there smoking weed in your tesla on the way to the test track though (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) i think you're you're sweet you're sweet in that in that way um yeah but the vlogs dude so i think your like your motocross and nations vlog i was i think that's mm. probably that was probably one of the coolest videos i've watched in in a long time oh, really? and just to to see like the yeah like you interacting as like a you know with like japanese like you're a japanese like you had a japanese filmer and you're like you got to really just be yourself and like have that like your authentic personality without any translation or anything like that and yeah it was it was really cool and i i guess i just hadn't really thought about it too much but it was something Mm. that i like enjoyed enjoyed watching you know like just bang click the subtitles and and really get to see like see you do your thing no i think i appreciate it (laughs) yeah maybe maybe i'll try to try to bring it back for when i'm when i'm actually back to racing yeah yeah so was that was that was that the plan this year you were gonna actually do some more videos and and like kind of do the youtube thing i do i do yeah i was like um hiring one guy already ready to go uh but yeah it just i just canceled everything you know so i was gonna do it yeah that's cool who was the filmer that you had doing it um so one one we we did all the youtube stuff was his name is yu yamamoto yeah he's actually uh from japan um likes to do this camera works and stuff so yeah we'll just book like pay for flights whatever hotel fees and and like um and like a daily salary thing yeah and then i just let him do all the social stuff yeah yeah no well he he does a really he does a really good job dude like i think you guys yeah hopefully when you yeah get back to racing and especially like outdoors and yeah it'll be it'll be super cool do you know like 
do you get in and look at the analytics of your YouTube and see like where the audience is? Like how much is American? How much is Japanese? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, you, yeah. I you never don't looked know. at it. What about on, on your socials? Is it mostly American followers or? Um, I, I don't even, honestly, I don't even know how to look at them. Like what, like <laughs> what part of the country that the, the catch the most eyes on like you can see yeah yeah. Stuff. yeah yeah you can see all oh, really? that stuff i i, yeah, I don't it'd know be, it'd be interesting to know because like i look at you know I, I look at you like a um it's funny so before i started the podcast when i was doing like the filmmaking and all the documentary stuff we actually went to japan to film we we're doing this documentary with like a music band they were american but they were going to tour with have you you know one okay rock yeah 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 so we were with those guys yeah yeah oh wow that's pretty crazy yes yeah so the band so we were with the band that was like under them and it was man it was crazy like i remember because so the singer that his parents are like really famous in japan is that correct oh i don't i don't know the small details but probably yeah, so from what from what they were telling me, um, yeah, the singer's parents are like the Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie of Japan. So mm. we'd like get to this hotel and there was just like thousands and thousands of people trying to get a fo- like full paparazzi. It was like Justin Bieber shit, right? And so we like get off the plane, we get a bus and then we go to the hotel and there's just like all these people and they're like having to like part the crowd so that the bus could get into the hotel. I'd never seen anything like it. And then when we went to, we went to the show, there was 50,000 people at the show and it was, it was in Tokyo and it was like a, it was like a big airplane hangar kind of thing, you know, like where they put airplanes, like those huge buildings and, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. 50,000 people were at this show and I just never seen anything like it. And it made me really think like, wow, Japan's crazy. <laughs> like really they get <laughs> like, uh, like fan, they get, have like a crazy fan kind of, um, uh, how would you say it? Like, a, I don't know. It's like a, they really love their big stars and, and like big celebrities and stuff. And I just, I, I look at you and it's like, cool look you know you got like tattoos really cool style you look like one of those rock star kids <laughs> that we were with and I, was like, <laughs> I was like joe shimoda could be a rock star like this in japan yeah i just you know i yeah i just gotta <laughs> i guess i gotta try to catch more attention for for this sport no, I think, but yeah I think the it, fan, honestly fans they're like really cool um like how do you say it? like like a not just a fan like a fan fan once you yeah. you like the sport and stuff like i went back there um maybe i got like hmm, like lots of lots of like hand gifts that they get uh for me to, like they gave for me to take yeah i left the track with some so many stuff it was pretty crazy yeah and and yeah that's kind of exactly what i'm talking about like japanese culture has yeah. like a a real appreciation like if you're a fan of somebody in japan then you're like a fan fan you'll really love that yeah. that person and i think that it's quite a cool part of the culture in japan i think yeah and yeah and also um one thing i i thought about uh when i went back um so you know like how in here when once once you're at the race and people want to take pictures and stuff like free to ask right like just you know asking athletes can i take a picture with you and i think which is cool um japan like the people are so not shy but respectful they don't like ask for the photos it was surprising like they're like i come back from like track walk around in the pit um just standing there not asking anything and i walk up yeah. take a picture with one one like a little kid and then he's like oh you take pictures and they're like 
can I take one? Can I take one? So like I was surprised. Like just like I just told him like just ask me anytime or any rider. They'll、uh, love to do that. <laughs> so it was so much different. That's cool. So was was it your first time back since you've been maybe like this popular or this successful? And was there a big difference so, from like the last time you were there to this time? Yeah. So what was different was like the last time I raced there was seven years ago. Wow. On eighty five, eighty five. So it was like <laughs> I was I was still raced the amateur class, you know. So it was the first time that I went back as a pro. So that, I think that was one of the reasons that was like pretty good impact on them. Were you surprised at the response that you got, or because it'd be very hard to know what to expect? <clears throat> oh my god! Yeah, like、uh, honestly, like the the truck, the the place that we did the race was not big enough for、really? all, all like the people to come. Yes, like like literally.、Um, so you get off this like freeway thing.、Um, To the track probably takes about fifteen、mm, minutes.、Um, took about like two hour from、really? like exit of the freeway to just to get in the track. Like people, some people didn't even get to see like the re- like actual race. I think that's amazing.、Um, yeah, like on- honestly, like li- like、uh, really surprised me. I I'll like come off of like of the van. Or like the the semi that they provide for me. Like I kind of wanted to like watch the track and stuff, like look other riders, but I couldn't even get to the track because so many people like asking for like you know handshake or something. So、um, yeah, it was it was honestly like it surprised me. It threw me off. Dude, I think that's very special, and that's that's kind of that's really cool to hear. Because that's kind of how I imagine that it should be for you. Like I really think that, you know, you've you've really done something quite special for you know Japanese fans and and the sport. And like I said, man, like most of the bikes that are on the start line, you know, like or most of our manufacturers, where it's Japanese, like the Japanese engineers built our sport, and you know, like they haven't. They haven't got to have a person to really cheer for. Like it's such a, it's such an important thing that I I think that that you've done, and it's uh, it's also quite cool that you're willing to like lean into it and you're willing to like almost give yourself to that that cause because I think that you know there's there's different there's different attitudes you could take. So you could be the guy that goes, I just want to focus on my racing. I just want to. I don't really care about that. I don't want to. And you know, Chad Reed sort of did that a little bit as a as an Australian. Like he was in the 450 class or the 250 class in Supercross then,、mm-hmm. and he was so focused on racing, and he didn't. He wasn't going back to Australia to race all the time. Like maybe I think you know once or twice he sort of did it and. Uh, and you can't blame a rider for that, you know. That's a it's very hard to do the the job that that you do.、Um, but yeah, I just think it's very cool that you're so committed to your racing. You're putting in the results that that you're putting in, but at the same time, you're also dedicated to going back to your country and being the role model and and being the ambassador. And yeah, I just I think that.、Um, I think that it's like a, a special thing, and I'm I'm really glad to hear that it was like that for you. Like I I would be very bummed if you could walk around the track and nobody talk to you. <laughs> yeah, well, well, like because so many, so many people told me、um, Japan's motocross motocross thing is not gonna go for long. They said. But I'm、um, I'm like so like I expected maybe,、mm, let's say, maybe max a thousand people at the event. When I went back, but yeah, it just threw me off. Like, I think at least there was like seven thousand or more, 
which is pretty rare because the place we did uh the race was in like middle of nowhere yeah. so like people will have to pay you know kind of a lot to get in like just to get there um yeah so really like um i'm i'm pretty like just thankful for them like just showing up to the just to the, the actual event mm. and get to watch and you know like feel this like because when you watch in person it's different like yeah that you can feel this energy you know and i feel like with having so many that many people i think they felt i hope I me mean, i hope they felt that energy yeah um hopefully they'll be back um for next year or something so i do you think you'll do the same thing like is it maybe just going to be a thing that you do every year you'll try and go back and do one of those one of those japanese races yeah so if i have a good time off and have an opportunity to race there yeah i would i would go um every once every year yeah it's uh it's probably getting a little bit harder with the schedule though a little bit but um I mean, just one race, you know, so. Yeah. And then you're coming out from out, outdoor, you know, so. Uh, I, th I think it shouldn't be that hard, but yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I just hope that we can do it again. Dude, if you uh, if you go back this year, I'll try and come. I'll try and come and watch and like come and oh, really? film and yeah, do something. Because I've been wanting to go, uh, I've been wanting to go do a trip over there anyway and i've been <laughs> i've been talking to tucker and trying to get him to convince kawasaki to make a 350 <laughs> so i'm like oh i'm like pushing him i'm like all right i'll come over i'll talk to the bosses i'll shake some hands i'll tell them i'll tell them that they need to need to make a 350 so maybe it's a little little trip that i could do and, and go and watch you and maybe i'd uh get the the tour of japan with josh motor That'll be that'll be fun. <laughs> that'll be fun. <laughs> would would you would you ride a Cowie um, three hundred and fifty? Yeah, <laughs> I mean anything really. Have you um have yeah, you ever rode three? Yeah. Have you ever rode a three hundred and fifty? No, never. Oh, okay, yeah. See, there, there we go. We need to we need to get imagine like just something right in the middle, like not not quite a four hundred and fifty power, but. Uh, like a real well i mean probably your pc race bike is basically what a normal <laughs> like a 350 basically it's it's funny because there's uh kind of a lot of bike i never rode um mm. like um in my culture we don't have the 50 peewee pee peewee the 50 oh yeah 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 you know, like the fast fast 50 two stroke one yeah i yep. i rode uh <laughs> um QR50. Yep, yep. Which is you know that what that is? It's like yeah, a, it's yeah, like a yeah, piece yeah. of like a like a small yeah. one. Like it looks like yeah. a toy. Yeah. Um I started riding that. I was racing on that actually. And then that to that to 65. It's kind of like big change, you know. Massive dude. Um, massive jump. Massive. Yeah, like I I'm like I'm riding 65 and then I see these peewee like 50 kids like jumping this big tabletop and stuff. I'm like kind of like high danger because <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> the wheels are so small. But yeah, like the, there's a lot of things that I didn't know or I didn't like. Um, it took me a while to like figure something out. like for example suspensions i rolled stock the bone stock suspension to like beginning maybe like middle of 85 i think really yeah like because i came here with stock suspensions um i thought it was pretty good like pretty stiff and stuff and then long time ago you, you know josh Rivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was like a good friend of me. And then, because he had pretty good suspension on his bike. So I was like, mm, can I try that bike? Uh, or, or he said, try try this bike for a little bit and tell me how it feels. And it was like super like 
obviously really good but I didn't like it at first because I was not used to it at all so <laughs> I mean now they I realized mm, that was pretty crazy that I was trying to go I was trying to match the pace with having like an all stock thing yeah it's yeah. kind of hard to do nowadays because the kids are so fast you know yeah, it's it's crazy the so, level of amateur racing over, uh, in America. It's just it's crazy. It's insane, yeah. bro. Yeah. Like, I was thinking, you know, you, you see those. There was like all the practice clips that were coming out of um, Hayden Deegan on the weekend at at A two, and like insane corner speed and the way that the way that he was riding the track. Like that's his first <laughs> time in an indoor. And all those kids were just ripping. It's like, what is going on? Like, you know, uh, the number 300 on the Kawasaki kid? Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, like, really good whipping. At Adams, maybe? No, I'm not sure. Maybe. Um, well, anyway, I think he's one of the Team Green kid. He throws, like, a big whip with, like, knack-knack and stuff on 85 no way i'm watching i'm like i'm watching that like even like i don't know a few weeks ago i'm like um yeah just yeah a little a little too much i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude it's just but, it, it's it's insane when you just see but you think about the the time those kids get to to ride you know like we had the had Basha on the podcast before uh before this one and he's just he talked about living at mtf and just from you know nine years old just riding every single day just for hours and hours you know like i'll put i've i've yeah. had my i've had my 350 since like 2020 and it's got 60 hours on it <laughs> <laughs> like dude he'd do that yeah, in a week crazy. so that's like so that's like also another thing in in japan um when i was little i would i would only do riding weekends mm. like i would just go school um even when i came here like we get we got a visa and stuff um stayed here for like a full time uh, I would go to public public school and and uh, write writing like a, you know Paris night and stuff um, nighttime writing and then Saturday Sunday a little bit yeah so it's just crazy that the people can ride you know every day doing this for sure the kids gotta be fast <laughs> do you think that um would you have liked to ride every day or are you kind of glad that you had a more normal childhood? No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good for every day. <laughs> it's too much for me. Yeah. I Yeah, I just... Mm. <laughs> it, this is just my feeling, but I just like to ride two, two time weekend. I mean, week. Yeah. Maybe three. Yeah. Um... For sure, for sure, it's important to train more. But if I didn't have any trainer or anyone, just training by myself, I, I would probably ride two, maybe three a week. And and what's your yeah. like? What's the thinking behind that for you? Like, why why does that? Why would that work better for you? Do you think? Well, so like, <clears throat> I love racing, the event of Supercross, but like I said, I I didn't start riding dirt bike as like a um like i didn't have any like role model for me so if i like dirt bike or not i like it but i don't love it love it yeah like i never had the days like i woke up in the morning i want to go ride dirt bike it's like i mean not to mean disrespectful but um I I take it I take it serious because I'm at the good good position with the team. Maybe have a good um um uh, shot of taking the title. So that's my that's my motivation. Um 
but yeah i just love racing you know so yeah. that's why it gets me going but yeah yes if people tell me if you want to ride their bike every day i will consider about it <laughs> yeah yeah and i think just, that, just different you know it's yeah 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 and i think that's completely fine to say you know like the and and again there's there's guys that you know and so formula one for example they're never in the car that doesn't mean that <laughs> you know do, doesn't mean that they don't you know want to win and that they're not doing their best to to do it but like you just can't train in a formula one car every day and then you keep other interests yeah. outside the sport <clears throat> and then you you don't get burnt out as quick you can have a longer career because you're not just like every single day so I think, yeah, like you could even hear you're like a little bit like, oh, I don't even know if I want to actually say that. Like maybe it sounds bad to yeah, say, it's just like, but it, I don't it think it like, is. Yeah, so it sounds like if you don't like it, why are you doing it, right? Mm. I think, well, I think people are going to say that, which I totally get it. But yeah, I, well, I realized this only a few years ago. Maybe uh, my favorite thing to do is is uh that the event you know the supercross mm. that the hype and the people that's what i like about this sport i still like the sport i just if they if people told me if you're riding if you like riding two wheels i'm like i like it but not like love love it yeah and i think that's you know? fair enough you know uh, it, yeah. and it's a it's a good you, it's your job like it's and you've got a really great job and you love doing your job but yeah, you don't have to just love the, you know, every single part about, you know, the training and all that sort of stuff. I know, I know Formula One drivers where if you give them a chance to drive a go-kart, they'll laugh at you. <laughs> they'll be like, oh, I'm not fucking <laughs> doing that. That sounds terrible. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. Just different. Yeah. So what what is like, the main interest that you've got outside of racing so like if if you don't love love motocross and you but you love like the racing what's the thing that you do yeah. are like really passionate about what's the things that you're thinking about when you're not dirt bike riding well i honestly um i just miss my friends family always you know um because i grew up in Japan I would always go out with friends you know just to eat dinner or something yeah. and uh, yeah that's 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 the the only thing I missed the most uh, in struggles not struggle but made me rethink t sometime because I don't get to see the friends often um, so yeah my like my hobby or favorite thing to do outside of motocross is probably just just seeing family um i'll, I'll go back to japan we have like we ha i have my like we have a parent's house obviously and my grandma's house uh my parents uh, my mom is here so i always see her so i'll stay in my grandma's house for like two weeks straight like just i, I can't get away with it it's like it never like gets boring always enjoy my time with my grandma and stuff and uh yeah just also but i you know i just take that as an another like uh, motivation for me yeah yeah you know yeah. i do this all the work here you know get um maybe a make a little more money come back to japan just two weeks straight um party <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sick uh the it, it, it is like a i guess it maybe ex can you explain i guess the culture in japan around family because i think that you know like i'm about to well i first of all too like i fully understand what what you mean uh like i lived in america for almost like eight years and was away from like family and and friends and it's definitely like a, a really hard thing to do to know that, you know, you are missing out on this time and because of Instagram and because we're all so connected, like you can see all of the things that your friends are doing and you're not there and you're not a part of. So 
it does make it it is it, it's it's hard to go through that but you know it is like you said a bit of extra motivation to to want to be successful and you know be financially set up and you know maybe you can be a part of like taking care of your grandma and um and that so but i guess culturally what is i guess how does family kind of play into your life in japan do you think that maybe there's like more of a focus on family and like being together and and spending that time together in japanese culture so so yeah um culture difference mm. there, I mean there's a lot of things but mm, how do you actually maybe there's not a culture difference maybe just because um, I was with my family they live close to me yeah. um, all the friends from school um, are close to me so I had a lot of people that's around me and I come here so maybe I hmm I struggle on the amateur days because like I said I love racing racing spirit the nerves and stuff I love it but to wheels like as an amateur we don't get to have not as big fans uh, not like a cool stadium and stuff always training training we'll go to local races or regionals and then Loretta is the biggest race um, so I mean, I'll still get through him, but, but like struggle to have fun, just mm. living. Be- just because I like, so first three years I went to public school. Okay. So, and zero speaking English. Um, <laughs> maybe I, f- I made one friend. Really? Like one good friend. He's a friend of me right now too. He's actually really cool. He rides dirt bike too. Um, yeah. So it just like from having okay every day you have like two or three people around you like you know good friends to to nothing every day just um go out go out from the house go to school you do this all all the work not talking to or can't talk to anyone because Mm. of your english skill just really i I honestly, I when I was at the school, I maybe speak none mm. because like so I've just felt the too much of the English barrier. Yeah, it was whole nother uh, language. So yeah, so like, what's the fun at this point? Yeah, like you have no friends and only one, maybe two of your family in in uh, your house and. And yeah, struggle a little bit, but as the time go on, um, you know, start to open up a little more, and then and then it got better and better. Now, like right now, I'm I'm I feel like I'm a little more settled. Yeah. But but yeah, like if yeah, like if people tell me wh- where do you want to live right now, I would probably pick Japan. Mm. But yeah, just the sport is so amazing here, so that's why I stay. But yeah, maybe. I don't think it's a culture different thing. I think it just, it's just me. It's just yeah. The ink that, it's crazy. Like the, the um, language is so. It's difficult. Like, imagine, imagine walking out the door right now. Um, and you can't speak the English. That's how I felt like. So. Yeah, like uh, maybe that's the part of it being um maybe a little more nicer personality now because. I know, I know the feeling of those persons, you know. Mm. Yeah, because it's. I don't think it's a culture thing. Yeah, no, that's fair to say. I think, um, yeah, it it is it is like such a a big deal because, like, you probably come across as very shy to people, and you probably come across like very quiet, and may people think like that's your personality, and then I think that people like almost in would interact with you like oh he's very shy but then it's like in reality if we took you from here and just to japan around your friends around your family like you might be the most loud extroverted funny like expressive person but just because you 
couldn't speak the language in the same way you can't express that same personality so it's almost like you would be like two different people like the person that you would be in japan is completely different to the person in america but inside you're the same person but you just can't uh express it to the world here yeah yeah i think that's the that's the thing (laughs) and and that would feel um, quite that would feel quite hard and and like frustrated it's almost like almost like you would have been like trapped inside yourself in a way yeah because it's the it's the problem you can't fix it like that yeah so very very stressful but but i'm fine you know it's it's yeah. done now <laughs> so think about this right imagine how crazy it's gonna be in the future with like have you ever seen the like elon musk with like the neural link and putting chips in people's brains and all the shit that's going on there i did yeah i heard about it so could you imagine you have like a the next generation of japanese kids that come over like you but you got like a Neuralink chip in your brain and you can just like learn English or you don't even have to learn English. Like you can just speak Japanese to English people and then they just instantly understand everything that you're saying. Like imagine living in that world. Very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's... It's like I don't think that's impossible thing. Nah, it's happening, bro. I, I think I think it's happening, yeah. <laughs> but, that yeah. will be so crazy. That would be crazy, yeah. So sure. was English just hard it's just hard for you or like do you think like learning because some people like so like <clears throat> I said, my my girlfriend, she speaks like three languages. And we, we travel oh, wow. okay. and she just like learns shit like straight away when it comes to comes to language. So I think that, you know, like some people, it, it seems like it just comes easier to than others. Like, do you think that English was just like a, it's a, just a hard language to learn um, from Japanese or do you reckon like you maybe just aren't that talented at, at languages? Well... No, so it's like at first, like I, I didn't travel here for studying. Yeah. So like, I came here nothing prepared. Like, that's the first thing, and then, um, also like from starting zero, I would I would work on it, but it's just like so like hard to um, learn it like by yourself like makes yeah sense. yeah yeah like it's it, it'll be helpful if let's say if i go to this um like a, another family who can speak english and japanese yeah. that could help me yeah like okay here what's this word mean and they'll probably explain it to me but each word you type in try to remember um and you kind of remember next day maybe forget Repeat, yeah, yeah, repeat, and yeah. then, and then you get little by, you get, you know, start to talk little by little. So, yeah, well, well, good, well, honestly, good thing my mom was really, um, um, pushing me on the education side. Yeah. So I, it, it's like I hated at that moment. Like I don't mind going to school studying, but just because I don't understand it because I was hating it so much. Yeah. But now, like, I look back, it helped me a lot. Like, because I go to school and then try to ride, like, ride, like, maybe an hour or two in the afternoon on the summer days, come back home, like, six, eat dinner, shower, and I'll study from, like, the time I get back to the house, like five, maybe four or five, like to like 11 p.m. every day. Yeah, so wow. it, it was it was super like oh, I was kind of almost crying at the moment, but 
uh, super hard that that one moment but it's like right now uh, if I can't speak more than I'm at right now it's I'm probably gonna struggle a little more so um, very thank- thankful but it's just different you know like yeah yeah oh man like it, it's uh I couldn't imagine yeah I mean personally I couldn't imagine going and and doing what what you've done and like the it's hard enough to be a pro dirt bike you know like professional supercross racer as it is without you know throwing that like challenge into the mix and you know you've got it's not even just the language that you're trying to learn like you're trying to get better at as a rider and as an athlete and you know there's there's definitely like a lot a lot on your plate no for sure but it's done now (laughs) so yeah yeah that's it so uh focusing on a little bit of of some of the the races or like the the racing side of things pretty okay. pretty cool to obviously like Geico so you did your first uh like the first little stint at at Geico that was the the first deal and then they end up closing down and then you find yourself at Pro Circuit what was that like to to get a pro circuit ride because that's like the dream for so many dudes um so yeah i mean it's a dream team but like like i said like i um in my in like in my mind okay as long as i'm in factory right and my don't let my parents pay for anything yeah i'll stay here um do what i can do make a living out of it but i mean if i missed out on the factory rides uh, i was thinking like just go back to japan yeah no really I, I i i was like no no point being here um so i mean it was kind of stressful a little bit when the guy goes shut down and then so i got a podium on the last round of outdoor I th- I think that that kind of made, and it, it's the rookie year too. It's it's hard yep. to, you know, put put in a good results. Like you're unsure of so many things. So yeah, um, yeah. So like yeah, that that kind of helped a lot. And then, yeah, like th- very thankful for my manager Lucas, for uh, putting my place like making my place there yeah <clears throat> and yeah it was supposed to be only super cross deal at first and they we extended it and then actually actually got my first win with him so that was really cool and then outdoors i had some podium here and there it was a, it was a good season so yeah yeah i, I think uh, <laughs> i i think the they were they're probably like you probably were one of the guys what that when Geico did shut down where it was probably a little bit like oh yeah he might not get a ride you know and and you you weren't really the big name cuz i would say right now you're one of the big no, name yeah. guys in the sport but then i mean you really weren't the the big name guy that it wasn't like a guarantee that you would get that factory no, ride not at but all. But then when you when you did like man you I think you're probably pro circuits like main rider now I would say which is crazy to think that just a couple of years ago you were thinking maybe I'll just be going back to Japan. <clears throat> yeah, it's crazy how like what the the confidence. I mean that's really, um, yeah on the on the um, Geico ride the, my first year my like on the starting gate my leg will literally shake really i'm like i'm I'm telling guys guys i can't even like grip my bike right now <laughs> like that like because it's so like i don't know i i, I just took it a little different like because never had this much of big like not pressure but like excitement in japan mm. yeah so it was it was kind of the first time for me I'm like, damn, like, this is, this is pretty crazy, you know? So, <laughs> like, I uh, have my leg shaking. I can't even, like, I, I didn't even have a grip strength. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Yeah, it 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 makes sense, man. It it makes sense that it would have been a extremely overwhelming uh thing to to have to go through and yeah, to feel like maybe you don't belong here, like maybe I'm not fast enough, but when did it start to turn around because now like I said, you're one of the main dude like if you didn't hurt your collarbone, I'm looking at you and Hunter to battle for the Supercross championship this year. And I think everyone's looking at you like that. <laughs> no, that's that's really, really thankful. But um, only only the thing I had since I was little, I had a really, well, I had a good um, fitness, I would say. Mm. Like I was able to like push fine at the races i mean obviously not like up here but as a rookie it's kind of hard to like push full for 30 minutes but i was like okay with that so always you know shaky shaky start <laughs> bad start and then and then i'll come back to like seventh eighth and then yeah last round of <laughs> outdoor uh for the first time i i got a good start um just kept the pace and then and then landed on the podium. So I feel like, yeah, the, the fitness, um, like that's what's helping me right now too. If I didn't have a fitness like last outdoors, um, obviously Jet and Hunter is really fast. Justin Cooper is fast. So um, yeah, one of my, I think, strongest thing is um, I'm not, not the best, but... I'm okay with like pushing to the end. So that helped me a lot. And and so you'd think that's just natural. Like even since you're a kid, you're always just really fit. Mm, not, not really. I was fit at first, but just when I trained, I never, uh, not really, I didn't really give up on anything, mm. but always, I was always riding like 90%. Yeah, yeah. So maintaining, maintaining. So, yeah. yeah, like beginning of the moto, I'll be kind of slow, but I have a, a big feel to the end. Yeah, yeah. And in some races, that kind of helped me. But yeah, now I'm I'm at the good spot. Well, I think I think the other thing that, that probably helps you with your like being there and being strong to the end is just like your technique on the bike is just crazy good. Like, I mean, you're one of the riders where you can pause the video and every time you pause the video, you're just perfectly stacked in line. Like your technique, it never, it never seems like you're in bad positions on the motorcycle. And I, I think that's another little secret as to why you know you're able to be fit is because you're just very very efficient when you ride oh thank you uh, yeah that's that's the um strong part of me i think and and that's a not uh also another <laughs> thing that's why um people tell me i'm sandbagging <laughs> oh really because of how my riding look like so <laughs> but i'm really not i'm trying my best so. <laughs> Where so where did you get that technique from? Is that something that like your dad was really good with, or like you study the 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 riders? Because like to me, you're like the Japanese Ken Roxon, I think. Oh well, um, I wasn't I wasn't good at all first. Like clutch, pulling clutch wide open, <laughs> being kind of a sketchy type of rider at first. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, my dad, uh, my my dad liked uh, you know Stefan Everts. Yeah, oh, yes, sir, I do. Right, he loved like uh, his standing up style, like just yeah. how he ride the motorcycle. So, I uh, I did one of the race without the, like a seat cover. He's <laughs> like, you go race like this, you're not gonna sit once. I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> race like that and stuff, but most of my technique come from I think I had a um trainer my first trainer his name is Yannick Carvella um we we worked on so many standing up um 
fundamental thing. Trying less brag, less clutch. It's all like all little like fundamental stuff, like simple stuff, but like over over time, like just came little natural to me. Yeah. Um. Still like lots of way to work, but um, smoother side. Like, yeah, I think he helped me a lot. Yeah, yeah, because it's uh, yeah, I think you're one of the rare riders that you've got that really good technique and so smooth when you ride, but you've got like your own style. Like you don't look like a a robot when you ride, and you you know you've got cool positions <coughs> that you kind of get in, and you've got your own flair. But then every time you pause that video, like it's it's perfect. It's a cool, it's like a kind of a cool balance to have. I don't think, I think you either get people that are like loose as fuck and just sending it and like swinging off the clutch and holding okay. the thing wide open. Or you've got the guys that are like perfect technique and they look like robots. And I think you've yeah. got like a really good mix of those two things. Yeah, I mean, also, also though, every, every writer want to post better videos, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like your good, good, like good day, good side, video yeah. all the time. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's true, right? Like Instagram so yeah. versus reality, that's right? Yeah, it's like there's no way people are perfect like that every lab. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, it's just I think watching, yeah, like I, I think it's especially hard to do in the races as well, right? So like it's really easy to ride with like that great technique and that fluid kind of style when you're practicing but you know to be able to actually do it in the race as well and i think that's one of the other things that you do well is like you stay quite true to your like technique and your form in the motors maybe that's why people think you're sandbagging (laughs) probably (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah people tell me do better (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but that's why people but, used to say that to Kevin <laughs> Wyndham. They'd be like, oh, you're not even trying. Yeah. But I always say, um, nobody asked their opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so you had a few... So we'll go back to Supercross last year. You were extremely fast in Supercross last year, but you had some big crashes and there was the the one where you scrubbed the shit out of the that double coming into the turn and you know you had that that big <laughs> yeah. cartwheel there what was that it like to go through that season where you had so much speed but well it sort of i think last year maybe just to go back a little bit even so the year before you had such good results and you showed so much like big potential where i think everyone started looking at you as a big title contender guy and then last year it seemed like you kind of had some bad starts and you it's almost like you knew that you should have been doing better than you were and so you were pushing so hard but then that kind of made some crashes happen what was that year like did you feel the expectations and a bit of pressure and like you were trying to make the podiums happen um a bit more and yeah like maybe that led to some crashes or yeah so i um yeah i th- i i was riding pretty good on off uh off season and then yeah i i think i don't know i think i to me i just had lack of um of myself like setting up the bike better Mm. I sh- I struggle. F- I feel like I kind of w- d- didn't know what I was doing to set up the bike enough. So yeah. like I'll get this. I'll, I was like getting this weird arm pump that I, that I that I never had. Yeah. yeah. Um. Like, yeah, just those little small thing. Like if you want to, it's like at one point, like you can you can go fast on any bike, right? But at one point, I like a setup will like help you, like ton ton of yeah it. yeah it's a big change you know and i feel like outdoors that's like another thing like outdoor i was riding okay because you can kind of get away with mistakes and fitness yeah um but super cross like so small mistake turns into like a big crash or like yeah. losing 
losing the second is it's kind of big so yeah um to me I, fitness was fine um speed at the track yeah capable of, of doing well but just the lack of uh making small changes changes and during the race day and strategy yeah um so I was stressed about like arm pump. Why am I getting it? Like, mm. like it's like I I'll, I'll line up to the gate. Okay, I'm going to get arm pump around like seventh lap. Yeah. Like planning, trying to planning ahead, but not in a good way. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. When you have this little unsure thing here and there, it's like that turned into those big crashes, and then and that's what happened. I think. And and was there any of the, at any point, does it enter into your mind that you have an expectation because of how well you did the year before? Honestly, I I haven't felt com like comfortable running up front in Supercross yet. Uh. Like maybe either because I'm not strong on the body side or the setup or. Yeah, I don't know why. Always um, uh, outdoor, I felt comfortable uh, running up the pace. But super because when you're at like a top three pace, I was like, I can I can do it, but can I do it for a long time? Mm. Like, unsure. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, yeah this, no, that, I mean, it, makes I, sense. it just sucks by this year. Yeah, but it just sucks that this year I was honestly feeling pretty pretty good. Yeah, like I'm not gonna say anything that like I'll I'm gonna compete for winning or not. But in looking at the past few years uh, to now, it's like not not like faster, but more sh like sh like stronger. Like everything's tighter. Like um, like. It's it sounds kind of stupid, but like I, I kind of start to knew like what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? No, nah, man. It no. Nah, it I makes to it, get, yeah. it makes total sense. I think. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a thing. I was actually texting with AC the other day, and um and so mm -hmm. I me I just messaged him and I was like, bro, I'm so pumped for you. Like you're back at the races. You're getting great starts. You're up front like yeah you're fading back a little bit but there's a momentum that these other boys have and like you remember when hunter had like his bad seasons and with injury and then he'd come back yeah. and like there was that moto where he really took it to ac at parlor and it was like we all got to look in that one moto at what he's capable of but his body wasn't there mentally he wasn't there maybe the setup wasn't there because you can't just snap your fingers and be a hundred percent. There's and there's so much momentum that you have to build as a racer, and you put in yeah. like good season after good season after good season, and and it starts to like really, um, it's like a compounding effect. And I think that you know what you're saying and what you're experiencing is like I think you're just experiencing compounding and like learning. And every year you get a little bit better and you get a little bit more knowledge and your body adapts uh, a little bit more. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's things that in this sport, like you just can't make it happen overnight. And I think that's why it's so hard to, to be at the top level. No, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely supercars. Um, yeah, you just, even if you just try to go fast for yeah. a lap. Yeah. It's like you you kind of can't you have to know like how to go first uh, like yeah. fast yeah yeah it's honestly it's crazy yeah like shredding a turn doesn't mean you know yeah no for sure and like I think um, AC he what he ended up saying was and so I basically was like you know you look at the guys up front like you've got. Eli's coming off great seasons. Sexton's been building for the last few years. Webb has been a two-time champion. And so these guys, like, they have this momentum. 
And he replied back and he said like, yeah, I've, I'm doing 80 and feels like I'm going 100. And those guys are doing 80 and it feels like they're going 40. So it's like the speed, like you're saying, you're not necessarily going faster this year. But you probably, if you're doing 80, you probably feel like you're doing 40 this year as opposed to last year you were doing 80. Yeah, kind of But like it that. felt like you were doing 80. Yeah. Exactly what you... That's the kind of the feeling I have. Yeah, like, when I do moto, um, yeah, just everything was stronger, um, consistent, um... Yeah, just literally, I, w- um, I I just had a plan ahead, a little more better planning ahead. So, yeah, it just sucks. To, <laughs> sucks yeah. to have my collarbone broken, but I'll be, I'll be back in like, you know, shortly, I, f- I hope. And then I don't, I don't think I will lose everything in two, three weeks. So, nah, no, nah, I don't, I don't think so either. Yeah, we'll see. So, was it cool to do the full outdoor season last year and be like you well you got better as the year went on and then to the point where you know you're on the podium overall I mean you're on the podium most weekends and then you know you finished on the podium in the overall championship like there's got to be so much lessons that are learned in a year like that and just to be in the hunt every single weekend and to to get wins and to to get podiums like that's to me seems like a lot of that momentum that you would build no for sure yeah from the gate drop number one from pala to last gate drop uh, pala is so much difference just lining up to the gate um you know kind of kind of you already know like you're gonna get good start yeah and strong to the end so yeah it's it's just crazy what like this experience and the the confidence can do really like it's so hard to explain this you know yeah 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 but man do you think about the difference of like the the kid on the geico in the rookie season with the legs shaking and not being able to hang on to the to the bike to you know, I'm sure you would have probably felt like a bit of a beast at the end of the moto or like at the end of that season, oh, like for ready sure. for anything. No, for sure. Racing felt fun more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I think like, you know, the that feeling, it, it must be so uncomfortable to that rookie season that you're explaining like your legs are weak and your arms like... That must just be terrifying to know that you've got to go and battle on those tracks when you're yeah. feeling like that. And also, like, <laughs> so, like, I just, you can't, you can't even just ride a motorcycle. Like, I'm like, what am I doing in here right now? Like, it's like only 50% of your body is working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, like, threw me off, but. Oh, it's, people are different. Some people are fine, but I'm. I guess I'm a little more sensitive. Yeah. Um. But yeah, just yeah, glad I figure out little by little. Yeah, but there you you can definitely see that there's like a, yeah, there's you know the kind of like shy, quiet Joe Shimoda off the track, but on the track, like there definitely does seem to be like you've got that fight warrior kind of spirit like how do how do you think how do you think about that mentally like do you do you have any like a you know you channeling any like energy like japanese warrior spirit (laughs) type of vibes like do you do you have that in your mind as like a as like a racer or your like dad teacher taught lessons you know i don't know (laughs) Um, my only motivation while I'm racing is like a fighting motivation is like I like to count down the laps yeah like I'll I'll set up before the race how many laps that I have 
and then yeah it's like it's the spirit when i race like you get you obviously get tired and some people maybe it's, you know like especially like outdoor hot long yeah you kind of want to quit but yeah i i don't honestly like i don't have a problem with that pushing to the end um yeah never run into that yet yeah and that's what i mean like it you you know that quiet kind of shy guy off the track but yeah on the track like you definitely can tell that you're a gnarly dude that just does you're not gonna you know you're not gonna back down no for sure <laughs> yeah it surprises myself too like i will like re watch the videos and like it's crazy like like i say it's crazy that i'm doing this um I'm watching myself telling myself like that's that's not me <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's someone else on the bike literally yeah it's almost like a it's almost like a a little like hidden part of your personality that kind of like only comes out on the bike because so when I I'm like I do I'll do jiu-jitsu right and I have that that same thing like I feel like I'm a very like nice person in in real life and I'm I never want to like, you know, I, I would never want to actually get in a fight with somebody. I always want to be like real respectful. But then I watch myself do jujitsu. I'm like, holy shit, you are the biggest asshole in the world. Like you look like you, <laughs> look, you look like you no, want to yeah. kill everybody. So it's, it's kind of like the, sure. it, it's almost like a, there is that part of myself that's like in my personality, but it only comes out when I'm doing jujitsu. And it's almost like, for you you're the quiet like very nice guy but then you get on the track and it's like he a dog <laughs> yeah i got that dog in me <laughs> dude how good is that <laughs> meme <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> uh, i was uh i was i was talking to tyler keith the other day on the phone and and we were, we were actually talking about digging i said the, the the whole dog thing he's like what's that mean bro like everyone always says that dog and i'm like I'm like, I don't know, bro. You know, he's got that dog in him. He's got, it's like a dog with a bone. Like, <laughs> good luck trying to get it off him. Yeah, it's so, it's so funny. <laughs> so, uh, then you, oh, we probably can't talk about the outdoors without the Hunter parlor takeout. Are you, uh, are you still dirty on your boy well, yeah, for, the, uh, for, the, <laughs> for the takeout? <laughs> Only thing that I can say is that woke me up. Yeah, 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 not too aggressive. I mean, like, um, it's racing because I'm not, I'm not mad at or anything. Yeah. Oh, it is what it is, right? Like, I mean, if it was me, if it was me, uh, me, if it was, if I was in Hunter's position, yeah, like that move, I wouldn't choose to do that. But it makes sense to do it. Like, I was, I was not surprised at all like yeah it, the, the thing the thing happens and then after i got taken out okay if and then didn't get penalized or anything right so uh if that passes um legal <laughs> so many passes are gonna be easier for me that's, that's <laughs> what i think yeah yeah true right uh was it was it I was, cool i was thinking Oh, sorry. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, so I was thinking like, okay, when I make and pass, um, I'll, I'll try to avo avoid this conflict things to other riders, so it would help me in the future, I believe. Um, but yeah, if that, I mean, the pass was legal, then, you know, so many like, in sh situation you can go for it now, but yeah. then you know you're gonna hit, but you're probably gonna make and pass type of thing i was trying to avoid that but yeah after that i'm like yeah like i said i woke me up and and i'm ready i'm kind of ready to race aggressive so yeah. yeah i think i think um we don't i don't have to do that all the time but whenever the situation um behind some riders yeah up I'm ready to pull some, not dirty move, but fair enough move. 
Well, like you said, Bosch is your favorite rider, so. Yeah, <laughs> it's just <laughs> super entertaining. So, uh, but I mean, aside from that, like I know you boys are all like super close. I mean, off off the the racetrack, was it was it a really fun year that it was pretty much you three boys on the podium most of the most of the weekends, and you kind of you knew that you'd be able to get up front and like race with those guys. It, it must have been pretty cool. No, for sure. It was really cool. Uh, I was the best summer I ever had. Um, yeah, it, it, honest, honestly, like, you go race Supercross, you get to see these fans, stadiums, it's cool, right? But outdoors, if you're not on the podium, it sucks because it's super hot. Like, all I'm thinking is, like, kind of want to go home you know like it's so tiring <laughs> yeah so like being on the <laughs> being on the podium every single i mean almost every week yeah i i enjoyed it it was good times dude you, you're right about that man like it's one of the things i remember the first summer that i did in the u.s i was so excited like i've been watching motocross my whole life just moved to america first season outdoors and I remember going to the races and watching some of the races in the aircon of the truck because it was so hot outside. And I was like, I was like, no, dude, I, you've been you've good. been looking forward to this your whole life, and you can't even fucking get outside and watch the races. So, man, I cannot imagine actually having to race them. Yeah, as long as you do good, it's fine. But if not, it's 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 too hot. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy hot and that's one thing that you can't see on tv no it looks easy on tv yeah but in in reality that shit is insane and the other thing that's gnarly about the outdoors too is it's kind of just a lot of the tracks are in the middle of nowhere you know like this weird flights to get to oh, yeah, and, yeah. and then like long drives yeah. to to actually get to the track as well it, it's such like a stark contrast to Supercross. For sure, Supercross is more more convenient. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice hotel, food, uh, nice stadium, clean. Yeah, outdoor. <laughs> not as good as not as good hotels, food. Uh, food could be okay sometimes, but uh, yeah, far far drive, <laughs> and and just dirty <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's you get out of the track sweaty um covered with dust it's it's like it's like you just you know like you you travel all the way to the place get dirty and come back <laughs> <laughs> like literally a, yeah 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 that's such a good way to say it but yeah, I just, um, I just have to do good. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, but like it, like you said, you get on the box and it sort of just makes it all worth it. You go home dirty with a trophy, not not that bad, and some bonus yeah. money as well. Not that bad, exactly. So, uh, so then you you go from the outdoor season and then motocross the nations at Redbud, and I must say, this year of motocross the nations, I want a jersey. Cause that kit that you had on from like okay. you won, like you won lit kit of motocross of nations, hands down. Oh really? Hands down. Yeah, easy. That, that, but that well, that weekend for me was, it was pretty tough. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't just. Yeah, I just saw because I, I ended up breaking my finger that that weekend. Oh, did you break it um, in that crash? Yeah, I crashed and then my finger was broken. But yeah, just tough weekend. Um, yeah, I it's I can't say some some things, but just a little underprepared. Yeah, as a team and my, myself. So um, yeah, so it's just hard to. Um, put it in good you can ride fast but it's hard hard to put it in good overall result from start to end yeah you know 
like starts obviously really important and and yeah so eh, this i just want to forget about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah was it was it cool though to like represent japan and like feel the the vibe of of the crowd and were, were you getting like a bunch of messages from people at home as well like were people at home stoked to to like be a part of that event? oh for sure yeah like lots of people and it, and honestly it's surprised because because the the my f- first win on the outdoor was at redbud yeah so people from there was actually actually really like nice to me um i'll do this uh, you, you know, there's like a parade thing where you get, yep. on, get yep. on behind the truck and then go around the crowds. Yeah, because obviously Japan is not like not been the the competitive team. So I thought it was gonna be kind of silent. Yeah, but I was really like people were excited, so I no, I appreciate that. Yeah, that, that's that's there. one. That's what I'm saying. You're, you're. I really think you're like one of the big stars of the sport now. Like people, I think that it's so easy for people to cheer for you. Like, and you know, American, Australian, like whatever, people really enjoy like cheering for you. As you know, I think you're one of everyone's favorite riders nowadays. So, might have been a surprise to you, but makes sense to me. I think. Oh, that's, yeah, more for us then. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Does it make you? Ha- I know it must have sucked to have those big crashes and to not be prepared, but does it kind of light a bit more of a fire in you now to to try and like like fix the program and like get it better for for Team Japan and be more competitive? Mm, I I don't really have a f- like good feeling on on the MXS Nation. The race mm. is really cool, I think, but. No, I like I like Supercross better, like to me. Yeah. So you do you reckon it's, you could see yourself being like a Supercross only guy? I don't know that I don't know about that either. But yeah, just myself racing uh, to just Supercross is way better for me. Yeah. More like as a fun size. So but yeah, I, I would right like to get a revenge one day um with yeah. a good team and and then more more preparation time yeah um yeah probably not get if i if we take it really serious i think i would have you know not go back to japan stayed in the country yeah keep testing yeah. the bike because the bike was obviously a lot different uh i changed so many thing in in the race day so again that's kind of a like an unsure thing uh, when yeah. I raced uh, this nation, so yeah, the the result like if to get a good result, I feel like the the I feel like I didn't put enough work to that race. So. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So it's also it's also like difficult. Oh no! Keep going. Oh. Okay, so it's also difficult because so it's like outdoor, right? You have the last round, and then does nation like. We had that designation like three week apart. Yeah. Like, so it's kind of hard to keep training, like right after this, the complete season's over. You know, I like my main focus was focus until the last round of outdoor, and then do the Japanese national, and then kind of like try to do my best in this nation. So. So yeah, if I wanna, if we wanna do good, yeah, we just have to keep working. Yeah. What what bike did you ride there? Was it how different was it to what you raced? Did you ride the four fifty or? No, two fifty. Yeah. Okay. I thought but you. But we used different. F- yeah, the fuel is different. Oh, because it's FIM, huh? Yeah. So that's a that's a a really big difference on the bike yeah and not okay. just the bike too like which that makes suspension work differently like i don't know more engine brake or whatnot like just everything was a little awkward when i was there so so yeah 
Yeah, so, yeah, okay. Because I would have just thought, yeah, I, I knew that you had to run different fuel, but for whatever reason, I guess I just didn't think that it would make that big of a difference. Like, I thought you would have just pretty much been able to ride your Red Bud set up, basically. I'm sorry? I kind of cut I thought I thought you would have just been able to run, like, your normal Race Bud set up. Uh, Red Bud oh, set up. Oh, yeah, no. We couldn't do it. Uh, no, yeah, we couldn't do that. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's crazy. Is there any stuff you reckon we we should kind of like add in? Is there any cool like maybe is there any stories that that are like kind of crazy like races that maybe like amateur days or you know any kind of cool stuff that we maybe didn't cover? Because I don't want to. Yeah, I want to give everyone like the best look at, at into your life as they can. Um. I don't know. There's so many crazy things that happened to me. Yeah, I don't know. I have to. It takes a while to. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, like, uh, maybe really memorize uh, those things. Maybe before we go, what what are some crazy stories? Is there like one or two stories that come to mind that it's just like people might not like uh, know that you like went through or or had to go through? Oh, you know what? Actually, last year Anaheim won. I was on my headphone bumping some like I don't know like uh, some music Machine Gun Kelly whatever yeah. um, I was like closing my eyes and listening to it because because the the noise cancelling is so good nowadays yeah I didn't hear anything at all and then all of a sudden I dropped the gate I missed the sight lap I didn't do full sight lap on the first uh. one super cross <laughs> 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 Because you were just bumping away the tunes. Yeah, I was, I was on the music and and the crew, the staffs were going like, you got to go, you got to go. And I'm putting my helmet on, strapping it. I didn't get to do my full sight lap. I, did only, I only did like a half track. <laughs> That's insane. Did it, help? <laughs> did, it, did it hurt the race or what? I ended up um, uh, hitting the gate, but... <laughs> Yeah, shit happens. <laughs> oh, that's funny. What um, what music are you are you into these days? Are you listening to like a mix of music? English music and Japanese music, or I like I like Japanese hip hop. Um, the rap, I like rap song. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, I like Machine Gun Kelly. Also, sometimes like a like a uh like female singers. Any any type of music except for rock. No rock. Like like a hard hard rock. So you know, like so when you're in, ones. so when you're hanging around Hunter and he's playing like Tool and shit, you just ain't about that life. Oh, I can't I can't do it. <laughs> Even my <laughs> manager Lucas, he likes rock. Yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw I he was he was it. literally at Parkway Drive last night. Oh really? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like full, full screamo oh. shit. Yeah, I, I can't do it. No, oh, that's funny. What about, uh, what about food wise? What do you, what are you feeling food wise these days? Like, what's your go to shit? Food wise, uh, honestly, not for, not because I'm Japanese, but I'm, I like sushi. Yeah. Since I'm young, um, um. I mean, hamburgers are good. <laughs> uh, Run that in and out program. Honestly, yeah, honestly, honestly, anything. I'm pretty like, like a food guy. What's the go-to sushi order for you? Like, what's the staple sushi? Uh, my favorite is yellowtail. Yeah. You know yellowtail? So, yeah, yeah that's, every time I eat sushi I'll, I'll probably order something that has it in it and are you like straight sashimi or, or you like the rice as well yeah with, with rice yeah. Uh, I could do both but yeah yeah usually like rolls or yeah okay. dude dude yeah, yeah. That's good. so I'll, mine I'm big salmon belly guy so salmon belly for me is like I just smashed that shit. We've actually got, we've got 
the dopest sushi place that's like 15 no not even like five minutes from the studio so monday morning okay. alex and alex and uh roans that's like their ritual is their monday sushi guys but this place is unbelievable block bro and it's four dollars fifty per plate everything's the same price and you can just go absolutely ham and they do the <laughs> nicest salmon belly and also like salmon okay. nigiri for me is like oh <laughs> so speaking to the, like the sushi when i went, went back to japan one of my dad's friend took me to like like really really like high spec place yeah like like high-end place um i mean obviously like sushi was really good but guess how much he paid per so it's like a like they'll just serve you yeah each piece guess how much this was uh 300 he told me later like a couple weeks later it was three grand. Whoa! <laughs> I was I was like, was it good? For, uh, it was good, but like at one point though, like just the fish and rice, it's kind of max out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's just like I was like, <laughs> yeah, three grand. I was like, you're not bar- you're not being real right now. Let's say, uh, let's say you go, you get to race Japan nationals again this year, and I get to go over, and I'll like I'll come. What would be, like, what would be the tour that you would give me of Japan? Like, if you were trying to, if you were trying to show me like the best part or your favorite parts of Japan, what would we do after the race? Like, let's say we got a week. Um. Honestly, there's a lot of places you can go in Japan, cool places. But if it was me, uh, I think it's cool to show people that were like just from walking from my house to my like elementary school. Yeah. I, I think that's really cool. Like where you grew up on. It just, you know, like because you see Tokyo's and and stuff you see you can see these pictures kind of like you have an idea i would say but like those small areas that that i like grew up in and i know these places so i think that's pretty cool so what what was the town that you grew up in where was it near it's uh it's called suzuka oh yeah you know suzuka uh f1 yeah, yeah. circuit track yeah yeah like right by okay yeah city of motorsport yeah right okay so and yeah what's the like because my like i said jay wilson he's just been over there racing for for yamaha this yeah. year and i can't remember mm-hmm. the name of the town that he's in but it's pretty much like the whole town works for yamaha so it's like there's such a a culture like around those brands so I guess, do you remember the whole, like, motorsports culture when you were growing up? I don't know. <laughs> you uh, don't yeah, remember? I, I have no clue. Yeah. I, like I said, I didn't know anything about, like, a two-wheel thing. So, yeah. But now I look, look up back to my place. And, yeah, there's, like, big Honda facility right by my house um lots of um go-karting circuits yeah. f1 circuit is really big um yeah a lot of a lot of bike shops and stuff so yeah what do you remember the most about growing up like when you think back to like your childhood memories of japan like what do you think of um honest honestly like Cause every day, like the fun, fu- the fun part for me was to hang out friends. So like I was kind of like a little bit of like wild, like not wild, but like a little bit like <laughs> un- unstable kid. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, <laughs> that's a wild kid. So like I would, <laughs> um, on my way back from school because we walk. Like some people take train and stuff. 
uh, if it's far. And yeah, so like, I would like door dash every single house as I like, walk by. <laughs> what's that? What's you know, that? Like the pain. <laughs> oh, you do and then run off. So it's like, and he just run away. <laughs> Get chased by the dog sometime. Because uh, my place, there's farm, farming places everywhere. Yeah. Um, people farm there so sometimes you see strawberries growing they can go (laughs) (laughs) Um, or sometimes I would just go straight from my house to friend's house they didn't come back to the home till like 8pm yeah lots of lots of good memories so what what was the uh, so for me like I was like a full BMX kid so I, we didn't really walk anywhere, mm. but we just rode like BMX bikes. And anytime I'd go to like my friend's house, it was building BMX jumps or, you know, watching like BMX or moto videos. So like when you were going to your friend's place, what, what was like the, what was the activities, the afternoon activities? Oh, um, tags. What's Ta- that? T- like, you know, tags. Oh, like uh, the game, like, like chasing each other and like. Game of tag yeah so so the like because of like it's it's such a small like narrow places yeah oh we'll, yeah we'll we'll use like like whole like um block of houses yeah to do tags on the bicycle and stuff because you can so, do that you know in japan so it's yeah. pretty fun <laughs> Yeah, so you just had like the full, like normal childhood of, yeah, just like neighborhood with friends, like school, and just, you know, like that real kind of like small town community kind of vibe. Yeah, small town. But yeah, they just a lot, lot of, yeah, because Japan is small country. Yeah. So everything is like tight. Yeah. Like buildings are close by buildings everywhere so yeah um oh, we did a lot of that stuff oh that's sick and what about like uh what about tokyo now like do you enjoy to go into tokyo and to be a part of like the city vibe and you know like because you're pretty stylish with like clothes and stuff like that and you got like shibuya like is that still do you still get kind of like inspired by that that kind of part of the culture um honestly honestly like hmm, it's cool to go there but uh yeah maybe like you said it's like it's kind of like uh like a, my so my place that i lived in is so far away from there yeah so more more travel than than like home yeah 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 it's like yeah, I'm, nah. I'm, like if if i go there i'll travel to there yeah you know book a hotel or something you know see around yeah but yeah, it's it's fun yeah no i think dude I, yeah i think tokyo tokyo is like a crazy cool city it's just such like a it's almost like another world especially for me like you know it, it, well that's like me how you said you felt when you like got to America and you were just kind of like dropped in this place where you didn't really speak the language and you couldn't like communicate. That's like when I, when I go to Tokyo, I mean, I'll be like, Oh, cause I'm asked, like <laughs> I got a couple, you know, like a couple <laughs> little things that I'll say to be like nice and polite, but that's it. You know, and it's, it's a trip when you go to a place like that, you feel like, uh, did you, um, you, maybe you felt like this when you're in America, but all you can do is like watch like you can only just observe yeah what's going on you you yeah. don't get to like interact with people so you you're almost like silent and just watching what's happening mhm no exactly it's, yeah exactly what you said but yeah so to- tokyo for, sure. for me is like a cool place where you kind of you go and if you're there like especially if you're just there like by yourself you kind of going out into the out into the city and then just observing what's going on because you can't really like fully engage with with people yeah (laughs) (laughs) 
What did you know? I, I only went a couple of times. So. Yeah, you know what I was thinking too. But yeah. the, in terms of like you moving back to Japan, you know, one day when you're done racing, like, dude, you'll actually be able to have like if you when you do retire from racing, you'll have a pretty sick career test riding for the manufacturers in japan like i think you'd be able to get like a pretty crazy good job and you'd just be able to live <laughs> go to work like ride you know do your testing and, and like yeah just be be back home like you'd you're like you're actually gonna have a pretty good career after racing too i think yeah i don't uh, i don't know what i'm going to do after racing um yeah i mean <laughs> Honestly, all I'm all I'm looking for is like, I don't know, have a have a nice family, um, and um, oh, this is also another thing. I I my maybe some, it's gonna sound crazy, but I like don't want to keep racing till like close to thirty mm. or more because yeah, like. I also want to do a lot of thing um while I'm young in in Japan and stuff so yeah um it just depends on my career but yeah it we'll see how it's going to go what what other things do do you want to do while you're young well just like um cuz my my dad like has a, like a company and stuff um get to learn it so i can maybe go after him um yeah. or like honestly like just you know um maybe find a relationship like actual relationship while younger age yeah is that i don't know just i feel like it i just like to settle in more when i'm yeah. at, uh, like the age of 30 or something yeah it's so, and and you want to have like a it because yeah it'd be hard like so if you're in america like the girls that you're around it's like american girls like do you see yourself settling down with like a, a japanese girl like maybe from your hometown like is that kind of what you see for yourself i don't know um i like, like i said just like whatever the life takes me but um i just it's just so weird for me to have no plan ahead mm. after after riding and so like it always makes me think like okay while i'm young maybe try to learn something um um and and what what makes me better for the future so yeah, like I said, just depends on career. If the career is really good, um, making good money and stuff, yeah, keep racing. It's fun, um, but we'll see. Yeah, what um, what what's the business that your dad does? Uh, it's like a recycle recycling company. And so you could you could see yourself yeah. working for that when you like when your dad retires, like you take over the family business or. I don't know like again like I'll learn how to do maybe a like a business side from my dad maybe yeah if he's not if he's nice enough <laughs> maybe start something um but yeah just de just depends on my career but the goal is like um yeah before 30 for sure I, I don't think um I don't see myself writing after 29 30 yeah yeah right now yeah yeah no i mean there's no there's no rule that says you have to that's for sure yeah so just different you know well joey boy we've uh yeah that, that was that was unreal i uh i'm so stoked that that we we're able to um to to get get the potty in mate but I know uh, you've got you've got some recovering to do. We'll, we'll let you get home and and rest up the old the old broken <laughs> wing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. stoked, man. I'm I'm stoked that you're able to come and do the potty, have a bit of a chat, and uh, yeah, like like we were saying before, I know it's it's not the easiest for you to um 
to to sit and and bash on in English for for <laughs> for a couple of hours, but um, I had heaps of fun, bro, and it was yeah definitely cool to yeah get to know like more about you, more about your story, and um, I guess like growing up in Japan and and the challenges to to get to where you're at in in the US. So I'm I'm stoked, bro. Thank you. Yeah, it was uh, it was good. It was a good session for sure. Um, yeah, I just yeah, yeah. I just want people. If I can say this right now, I just want people to look at me as like, um, um, just a shy person. Like, well, um, once I can talk a little better, open up better, it's a different personality. So. Um, I may sometime, uh, when I, when people look at me, I may look like a weirdo because not talking enough, but yeah, just hopefully people know that I'm pretty cool inside. So yeah, when you guys see at the stadiums and stuff, just, you know, well, say I, what's up, <laughs> man, honestly, I just, I, I reckon that you're cooler than you think you are <laughs> like i've never <laughs> i've never looked at you like you're a yeah like weird or not talking or anything like that and i i definitely i know um yeah i know the struggle like of, of i don't personally know what it would be like but i know the struggle that you would be going through to you know like like we were saying before it's like there there would be like this person on the inside that if you if everyone can understand japanese that came up and spoke to you like there would be this different person that they would you know be able to interact with and it's like a a process for you to to get to you know match that up on the outside but bro i think that whatever pressure that you feel to talk more or to talk better english or i think that you should let go of that a little bit more and feel a little bit more relaxed and a little bit more, uh, you know, just cool to enjoy the process because I'm telling you, everyone that works in this office thinks you're the man. My girlfriend thinks you're the man. <laughs> like there's a, there's so many Joe Schmoda fans out there. So I think that take that pressure off yourself a little bit. Don't, don't stress too much on it and, uh, and just enjoy what you've done, man, because to come from Japan as a, a young kid, that didn't speak English and to, um, you know, to, to do what you've done, man, it's a, it's a crazy journey and no one's done it the way that you've done it. You know, like you're a, you're a super unique dude. You're a special dude in that, in that way. So I'm telling you, bro, just be a bit, a little bit more easy on yourself, I think, because there's a, <laughs> yeah, we're all, thank you. we all enjoy watching you. We all enjoy everything that, that you got going on, man. So I don't think that you should, I don't think you should feel like a weirdo is what I'm trying to say. Okay. No, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh and let's keep let's keep the vlogs going. Even um well I guess you, yeah, your guys your guys in Japan until he kinda comes over here. So when you start filming more too, like dude, just go in, bro. Just give us and if we gotta <laughs> if you gotta if you gotta do shit in Japanese, even like I actually even think like you could mix it up in your videos. Like, I think that I, I totally think it's a superpower what you've got going on. Like, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's like a, a liability or it's not like a bad thing that, you know, you, you can't speak perfect English. I think what you should do is just like mix it together, have some stuff in your videos or on your social media where like you're talking Japanese and then run some English subtitles. And then for the people that are in Japan that can't understand English, speak English when you've got to, and then run Japanese subtitles. And then everyone, like, we all get the best of both worlds. Because, you know, apart from, you know, apart from Kenny, like, you're the only guy that that uh, kind of has this. So, yeah, I just think switch that, switch that focus and see it as, like, a really cool superpower that you've got that, you know, you've got these best of of both worlds mix that shit up and yeah like i think that you know i think that you can really you're going to be one of the guys that can like grow the sport of supercross dude yeah thank you 
We are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.